my husband is not here, but he's David Owens. We have three kids, um, Kevin, Kyle, and Melissa. And that's Owens Farm. It's a family business. We we have 112 acres here in Sun Valley with a house. And we got started, though, not here, but we started in New Hampshire on a very small farm, 13 acres, just after we got married. And we started out just raising animals for ourselves. And when, when our kids came along, we got very interested in nutrition. So we had well, everything we've got here, but in miniature. Pigs, sheep. And what happened is we began raising these animals. Neighbors began asking, could we raise some extra for them? And that's how we grew. And looking back, little did we know that what the local movement was just beginning back then. That was in the 1990s. And that's when we decided to move to a bigger farm. And that's what brought us here to Sun Valley, Pennsylvania in 2008. The farming model is, is sustainable farming, where we raise the animals in as natural a setting as possible. And we raise livestock, so the secret to our farm is rotational grazing. We are a grass-based farm. We have 80 acres of grass, and we use electrified fence to move the animals through. And what this does for the ruminants, the sheep and the cattle, it allows them to eat forage entirely on grass. For the pigs, it allows them to always be on clean ground, and the chickens as well. What we do, instead of having a manure lagoon and manure spreaders and all that, we just keep the animals moving, and their manure is returned right to the soil and fertilizes the soil. So that's, that's what we do with our animals. We feel that our animals are a lot happier and healthier when they're outdoors in their natural environment. And that translates into the food because a healthy animal does not need antibiotics and medicines. We don't have to use growth hormones or any of these modern techniques that will enhance growth and, and make it fast. We don't care about fast. All of the other sustainable farmers, we're in the same organization and like any industry, it's a tight network, everybody knows each other. And so we help out when we can. Uh, one thing, for example, we, we sell pigs, we sell feeder pigs. Not all farmers are willing to raise, keep a sow all year and raise piglets, so they'll come to us and buy the piglets that we've raised and then they finish them off. Um, anybody that does raise pigs constantly needs a new bull, and we all have that situation because if we're keeping females, then every couple of years we need a bull that's not related. So we all keep in touch and trade and exchange bulls as needed. We know people that want to sell lamb because their customers like lamb, but they're not set up or they don't have time to raise the sheep. So we'll sell young lambs to them. The sheep camp is probably our most famous program locally. It's a day camp in the summer. It's for children 7 to 12 years old, and the focus is on animal science and fiber arts. And the kids come here Monday through Friday in small groups of 15 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And each child is assigned a lamb, his own lamb that he'll keep all week. Most of what we do are pre-ordered meat. Lambs, for example, like right now, people are putting in orders for lambs, which will be butchered in the fall. We keep a running list of people who want pork, and people will pre-buy these months ahead. Even the chickens are pre-bought. But you're always meeting new people that didn't have time to pre-order, so we do keep um, some chickens and beef and some small amounts of, of meat in the freezers. There are some, my husband is a beekeeper, and so he does have honey and honey products in the farm store. And the tours are something that we offer. We offer private tours when people want to schedule them. Right now, it's all family. We do have two adults and three children, and so we don't have any employees. We are about to send the kids off to college, and then we'll be coming to the point which every family sustainable farm comes to. People have different solutions, and I don't know which way we're going to go. People come to us and they buy our food directly because they like the way we raise the animals and they know it's completely transparent like they're doing an end run around the industrial model. And yeah, the differences are huge. And when I talk about industrial, I'm talking about the big chicken houses, the big hog houses, and the beef feedlots. The big hog houses and the chicken houses, the animals are under extremely inhumane conditions in many, many ways. The animals are highly crowded and highly stressed. 
They all fed antibiotics to prevent disease because those conditions depress the immune system. They are definitely fed growth stimulants because in that contract-based agriculture, they are pushing the growth and under very, very tight parameters with the people that are actually own the animals and are contracting. And that, those are the biggest things. Our customers in general are families with children. We don't sell to restaurants, except with there's one exception. There's a local restaurant that prides itself on local foods. And um, so we do sell to Emma's. But um, as in general, that is not a model. We don't want to be viewed as a commodity. I mean, we have, we have a lady that comes from New Jersey. We have a lady that comes from another state. So maybe 95% is within a three hour drive. It's not, we very much depend on the local.